First of all, thank you all for coming tonight. And welcome to uh, the North End Public Safety Meeting. I just want to inform everyone that we, uh, Matt Conti will be continuing the meeting, the public meeting. If anyone has any objections, just let us know. We'll have the, uh, the camera shut off. And with no objections, we're going to go forward. And we also have another member of the Phil's here also. Are there any, oh, that's a good reminder, though. Are there any other uh, uh, members of the press here? If you write your stuff on the computer, I'm going to want a shock. All right. Well, we're not going to start with that. We're going to start with the. Uh, how real? We're going to start with the crime stats as as we usually do, but then we're going to switch into uh, some of the quality of life issues and some of our neighbor concerns. And I know there's a lot of issues we want to talk about uh, tonight. Uh, but we're going to try and get through the first part before we get to that part. The good news, and there is good news, is crime is down again in the North End. So the overall crime rate has dropped again, which is excellent news. Uh, this is, I'm going to say, probably out of all the 11 neighborhoods we cover, the North End is, is the way the least crime in, in, in this neighborhood out of the 11 that we cover in District A1. So we're doing very well. Uh, just in the last 30 days, there were no homicides. It doesn't mean it's good, right. but it doesn't mean it's better. Yeah, we're, we're, we're talking crime, right. We don't mean that there's nothing happened. Yeah, we're going to talk about some of the stuff that happened. I know it just uh, over the last weekend, it was the move, uh, move, what do you call it, the move in, move out weekend. A lot was going on. But uh, just overall, the city, the city did make a lot of efforts to try and, and get people out from ISD. We had extra police on. There were a trash out. We, we, we saw it, but there was, there was a lot of attempts made to, to get the neighborhood back, back going again, get that stuff picked up, and to, and to deal with it. So there was a lot of effort put into it. Um, I know it wasn't perfect, and we're not saying it wasn't. We were, you know, if you know there's some parties also and some other stuff that I don't like to discuss, but uh, you get that video that sent to me by uh, Matt also. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're going to talk about that afterwards. It's funny. The um, there was no homicides, no sexual assaults. We had uh, one robbery as compared to two robberies, the same time period last year. Two aggravated assaults. Uh, we made an arrest in one of them. One breaking into and that's compared to five breaking into. This is a two month period because we didn't have a meeting in July. July. No, it's the last 30 days. The last 30 days. This isn't from July. This is uh, from August. They had a meeting in August. We had a meeting, a meeting in August. This is for the last 30 days. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, the last 30 days. It was uh, two auto thefts, 14 larcenies, that's general larcenies. Uh, it was five larceny from motor vehicles. It could be up to 15 last year. No graffiti, no community disorders, and the police towed uh, 24 motor vehicles. We picked up our, you can tell, there's four, only four towed for the last 30 days in 2012, so we did have a lot more of uh, parking enforcement by the police. We gave out 86 moving violations and 225 parking citations in the North End. In the last 30 days, we did make five arrests, two for run on robbery, one for open and gross lewdness, uh, one for a warrant, and one for being a solidly person. I'm going to turn it over to Teddy for going through the uh, reports. The uh, robbery is on the 24th of August, uh, 12.22 a.m., 300 Commercial Street. The, um, uh, the suspects approached him, uh, four, four males pulled a knife, and they stole his, he was walking with his girlfriend on Commercial Street, and they stole his white pole hat and uh, five dollars U.S. currency from him, and they fled. And they white the aggravated assaults, there was two. One was on um, the 6th of August on uh, Parmenta Street. A 
using it is the um, the victim was, um, was approached by males on 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 at 16 Paramenta, right? and they get involved in an argument, verbal argument, and then they, um, the suspect uh, was, um, stated he had a, 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 a gun, and which it turned out to be a um, plastic uh, replica 9mm, which he put under a, a car at Hanover in Richmond. And, uh, and, um, they were, uh, one of was three suspects involved, and they, um, they also had a pair of bolt cutters on them that was, that was also held as evidence. And they, um, basically, the detectives were looking to further to follow up on this. So they, they, got, they got them. They got them? They got them. 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 And the other one was on uh, Commercial Street. Where were they from? Uh, one from Endicott Street and two from um, the homeless shelter, Harrison F. The other one was um, it's commercial and house street. It was um, the uh, victim was shot by a, a BB gun, right, from across the street. And then, uh, Vehicle it was a Toyota, tan Toyota that fled the area after the verbal argument in the uh, what? And, you know, the victim was a uh, gentleman from Walton, a taxi driver. And so there was a verbal argument first, and then he was uh, hit, and, uh, no injury, but a uh, in BB in in a commercial in House Street. The beginning was on the Unity Street on the 28th. It was actually, uh, it should have been labeled more of an attempted B&E. The, uh, no, no entrance was gained into the home. Someone pushed the air conditioning unit uh, in the window. And the victim came home and saw damage around the window area and that the uh, air conditioning had been pushed uh, in, in towards the uh, living quarters. And that was on uh, Unity Street on the 28th. Between 440 and 238 a.m. We've spoken before about air conditions and how that's the most common way if they actually enter an apartment. Uh, you see it throughout, throughout downtown. They push those air conditioners right in and right into your apartment. So it's something to make sure you, you secure them properly into the window. Otherwise, it's very easy to do. Uh, the Lassities. There was the uh, 14 reported. Um, generally, there was a lot of bicycles. We were talking today with this. Uh, we don't know if they're um, being taken because they were on the sidewalk. We're going to check the public works. There's a couple were called in. Yeah, but so those were, uh, you know, some of the bicycles. Like there were tracks, they were expensive bicycles, uh, not ones you just leave out on the. Uh, I don't know, I'm looking at the value on those bicycles, I'm reading the reports, I don't know, like $1,200 or something. It doesn't seem like the kind of months that they leave. Uh, I know I've had an issue before with people just locking their bikes up uh, on public property and the city will come down and take them. Uh, but I think those ones were more expensive. The first one was on the August the 5th, it was on Sheep Street, and the Mongoose bike was taken, it was walked to a pole. Uh, the next last leave was on the 6th of August on Commercial Street, and it was an iPhone stolen. Uh, the um, next one was a last leave in the building on the 9th of August, and it was uh, another cell phone stolen. And another last leave of a bicycle on the 13th on Prince Street, and it was a uh, teal um, road trolling bike. Thousand dollars value on that one. Last thing in the building on the 14th on Salem Street, and it was um, uh, cable adapters um, and um, video games were stolen. Uh, the uh, next one was a last week on the 15th of August on Atlantic Ave, and it was another cell phone stolen. 
Uh, lastly, over on the 16th, on Atlantic and Richmond, uh, Apple iPhone stolen. On the 19th of August, a Boston Bicycle Commercial Wharf, a $1,200 Gary Fisher bike was stolen. On the 21st of August, lastly, the building on Salem Street, and it was a, um, actually it was a bicycle in um, accessories. Another bike was stolen on, the, uh, on Salem Street, $500 bike. 25th of August, Commercial Street, and it was an Apple iPad and iPhone stolen. Uh, last in the building on the 25th on Salem Street, Apple iPhone stolen. Uh, Webster Place, last on the 8th, August 30th, uh, it was a, um, a woman had um, hired a contractor, and um, she decided she had given them a check. She decided she didn't want to the yard cash the check. And uh, on the 31st, Atlantic and Richmond, another bicycle, a, a trek, a mountain bike was stolen. And the final one was a lastly on the September the 2nd. Uh, uh, he was playing basketball on Commercial Street at the park and someone stole his iPhone. He left his phone on the bench. So the iPhone, but the rest of District 1, that was our number one item of stolen this year so far is the Apple iPhone. Um, they're very, you know, it's an expensive item, it's a, it's a good phone. They have very high resale value, it's $200 on the street to, to sell these phones. And people uh, are careless with them, they leave them around, they leave them on a, a, a counter in a restaurant, they leave the guys that he left it playing basketball, whatever he's doing. People are just going to steal those phones left and right. And, and obviously it's an expensive item, people are just them. So we keep warning people. To, to do it. Besides the larceny, oh, it doesn't happen down here. On the Boston Common, we've had a number of robberies of, of iPhones where they're snatching them right out of people's hands. People walking, you know, down the street talking on the phone and they snatch right out of their hand because, again, it's, it's such a high value line. I don't. Yes, Jen. Yeah. I was going to say, is that like assault as well? I mean, wouldn't they just say, may I have your phone? <laughs> do, they, you know, do they hurt anybody? Or so many of those. Yeah, well, some of them have been yeah, snatched out of their hands and people knocked down. And, and reported as a stolen. Yeah, if it's reported as that, if they take it, they pull it from your person and knock it down, that's a robbery. That's an unknown robbery. If, if, if I leave it on the table assault. and someone just snatches it and it takes off, it's called So off. if they were to get arrested, they would just be arrested for stolen property, not like assault and. Yeah, it'd be a last you know, maybe if. Uh, it was considered a big crime. Yeah. Uh, well, one of the things that we've, we've tried to do, these departments have tried, is to change the way the phones are. So you can't resell this phone because yeah, the electronic serial numbers, and that has not gone through. But that would wipe out that whole secondary market. Because these phones all have a unique number, and you could never reactivate that phone if it was just once reported stolen. That would take care of the uh, secondary market. Because if this is two hundred dollars, most people don't have that much cash on it. But if they snatch that phone, you know, a lot of we have drug addicted individuals and everything else walking around. Now they get two hundred bucks, and that's that's what they do, and that's why that's our number one uh, that number one item for us. That was on. <laughs> One of the ones I remember reading, which I found particularly disturbing, was an incident that, if I remember correctly, was somebody, like, a loaded firearm fell out of somebody's waistband, like, right on Prince and Hanover. I think it was a Sunday night of uh, St. Anthony's. It turned out they had a permit. They had a permit. In the morning, people were running around with yeah. firearms. The, the person was licensed. Uh, we wound up seizing that firearm. Yeah. They'd, been, um, they'd been drinking. That's... Your yeah, license was seized and their firearm was seized. Um, they may be charged. You know, detectives may charge that person. Uh, but they were licensed to have the firearm. They did drop on the ground. How old was the beast. It was a person, I think, in their 30s. Uh, I don't know. 32 years old. 32? Yeah, 32 years old. Uh, no, outside. Were they outside? But we did, we did get, you know, we did take the firearm off the person. We did take away their license and then, you know, Something like that, even if they don't get criminally charged, they will lose their, their firearm license. Because the chief of police, or in our case in the city of Boston, police commissioner, 
has ultimate say in those licenses. And, and something like that, where you're drunk, you, you know, out in public with a firearm. They didn't know license that. or not. That, that just, that yeah, was really yeah. Disturbing. No, it was. It, it, that's, a, that's a good point. But we go through the reports. So just We read just the uh, one time you call it. We don't read every single police report or police incident that occurs. It could be too many. Bikes locked up and stolen, cars yeah. stolen while people are riding them on. Locked. Everyone's locked. locked up. And as some of these coming around, like cutting them and Still. what is there a specific law or rule with regard to where you can leave a bike? Can they just leave one anywhere they want, wrapped That's around the pole? That's not a problem right now. <laughs> we would try to do is on by the place. We have to put some bike racks down, uh, and we need to put more bike racks in the neighborhood. We just don't have enough bike racks in the but, but I mean, people cannot just leave them anyway. They're not supposed to. Okay. They're not but, supposed to be well, on the, the reason supposed why to put them at the bike at a bicycle rack, yeah. not shape Okay, but the reason why I was asking is because I'm on Hull Street, I'm on the Freedom Trail. Yeah. And they put bikes there, they leave them wrapped around the poles, they fall down, the tourists trip over them, you know, some kid falls and cuts themselves and whatever else have you, and then the, the person who owns the bike, when the bike isn't there, they're up in arms. Well, I mean, you know, what do you expect? Yeah, we have had complaints in the neighborhood about people leaving bikes attached to fences and things like that. Yeah, uh, we had one last month when Tommy and I went down on Prince Street by St. Leonard's and it was uh, pointed out to us the two bicycles uh, that we did have removed by the city. So if you, if you see them, obviously take a photo of them or just let the mayor's hotline know. Yeah, so once we find out it's at the end, we will yeah. take the bike. So we, we, we take the information, we notify transportation, they in turn will call the DPW. The DPW has a, a, a bike uh, walk, they break the walk, and they, they keep the bikes down in front of the road. So if you are missing bikes, maybe something didn't happen to your bike, it could be down in front of the road, so you can call the DPW. The other piece is if you call 343-4422, I mean, we do recover a significant amount of bikes on this district. Tommy Corbett is our property room person, so you can call him 343-4422. If you're missing any bikes, can't get a hold of them for some reason or not, call our office. We'll do a follow-up to see if we have the bikes. And if we're having a parade or anything like that, just so you know, we sweep the streets now for public safety reasons. We don't leave a bicycle, which in other countries has been used in bombings. We don't leave it there. We go through and we'll take them all up off the street. So people would, people would lose them. Well, I'm not going to talk about Detroit. I'm talking about if somebody was left. Well, did that. You took care of Detroit. You apologize. You apologize. Uh, Officer Boyle. I think they took them out of context. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. It would be very easy to assume that these bikes, or most of these bikes, were stolen during the overnight hours. Is there any type of trend or pattern as to when? These bikes from the last 30 days were stolen. They put them in the time and left it at 8 a.m. Yeah, we don't have like an exact time. I mean, I would assume it's probably on the overnight, maybe some of the day. You figure that both cutters kind of are probably used in taking them. For what it's worth, my son's in college and they've had a bunch of like bike frames cut and everything. Like, the one thing that they say never are able to get them cut or the uh, u locks and always tie them to your wheel and everything other cables apparently those types are really easy to just cut through well, that's the cutter or whatever, so. uh, the last is from motor vehicle there was five the uh, first one was on the august the 7th on the Anova street and it was a uh, the victim had his handicap flashlight stolen from inside the vehicle the next one was on the 17th on Commercial Street in, uh, in the garage. The uh, victim left two sets of golf clubs in the car worth 5000 Those were taken. Uh, the third was on the 23rd on Commercial Street. Uh, the uh, victim had his front fog lights removed from, from his toy, Toyota Avalon. The next one was on the September the 1st on Fulton Street and the uh, victim left her purse, U.S. currency, and all her bank cards and personal papers in the uh, front seat. And then the, uh, the final one was on commercial walk on the 3rd of um, 
September. It was a um, Garmin GPS was stolen from the car and the individual was uh, arrested. Was it Street. Pine Street. Oh. Yeah, Jen. Yes, uh, when those three kids had taken to the North End, and now uh, one of them had, so to speak, uh, a, a toy gun in uh, old cutters, were those uh, ever tested like fingerprints, with the gun or whatever? Uh, is that how you they got? got the kid? Is, did you have that follow up as proof? Um, well, well they, they took it from him. So they got, they got those kids. So they have, you know, it wasn't like it was an unknown. They took them that night? Yeah. yeah. So well, the night of the, the, the plastic yeah. replica was found underneath the tire of a car. They, they took it that yeah, night. They, took those, they have those kids identified, so, yeah. They have them identified, but did they get arrested? Yeah, they yeah. got a warrant. Teddy's got to go over the arrest reports on the side. But that, that was... Chucky talked about that the other day at the, uh, with the Northern Chamber of Commerce. I was talking to Rex when we got in. So we did get those those kids. We you know they are. We resigned to fix that one. The auto thefts so was, was one eight, August 13th on Clark Street. The victim parked his car at 12 p.m. Came back at 9 a.m. in his uh, Chevy um, Cruze SUV was stolen. And the uh, next one was on uh, Commercial Street on the 25th. And it was um, at one of those colliders, the um, scooters. And, uh, down at the commercial in Hanover. Someone uh, was the agenda. Uh, the arrest for the, um, on the 3rd of August, it was open and closed lewdness on Hanover Street. The, um, the victim, uh, uh, the suspect was from a homeless individual from 4th Street. And he um, basically exposed himself in front of people on the Hanover Street and he was arrested. That, that was good work by the offices. They went up um, by government center T station, drove around after looking for him. One of the people that had seen this guy expose himself, I mean really expose himself to, had taken a picture of him and showed it to the offices. And, and they spun around figuring he might be homeless and he's got him up by the government center T station. Um, and again, it's. Uh, not his first time in doing something like that, but he said, it wasn't an, just an accident. He meant to do it and he told himself. Okay, on the arrests, where we had the um, open grocery room that I just brought up, the other one was a, um, a solidly person on August the 3rd on Commercial Street. The individual on the outside was down in Fort Worth Park. They were drinking, a group of them were drinking, and the um, officers were called down to break it up. And this one individual didn't want to leave, so we came charging at the officer, and he was arrested for just looking to the person. How old was he? 20. <clears throat> the the uh, next was the, um, on the 21st, uh, at Commercial Walk, the uh, property manager noticed the car from into the property down in the walk area and uh, got by the security and he was basically um, stealing air conditioning units. He was stealing air conditioning units and he, uh, he made good his escape. They got all the information on his car and he was arrested on a warrant over in Dorchester. And um, he'll be in uh, court. And then a bunch of other things, you know, the warrants pending on him. He's a well known uh, thief, that person from yeah. Rochester. Uh, they wound up using his photo and identify him for uh, breaking down, I think it was on Devonshire Street, also the same uh, individual. That was, again, good work by detectives. Well, uh, the, uh, 
It was the unarmed robbery. There was two arrested on the uh, 25th, 1.19 a.m. on uh, Hanover Commercial. They uh, the, uh, office, the he was struck with a uh, mini baseball bat in the, um, it was in a, after a uh, fight, and he was arrested on uh, drugs, possession of class B, possession of class E, and assault battery, dangerous weapon, there was two of them charged. And they were from Everett, right? and the two brothers from Everett. That was also, that was one of the nicer piece. That was, again, a good, a good arrest, uh, and thank the people who called in. We had a lot of help from the public on that one also. That was the other one. That was the other Yeah, that was an attempt to run. Yeah, right outside of the other one. Attempted robbery? Attempted robbery? Yeah, I'm robbery. Yeah, they were. They were charged. And ADD veterans. That was the end. And drug charges. That was the end. Yeah. 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 It was not that. Yeah. All right, we're going to open up for questions. Now that the fee season is over, could you please provide us with a recap of the whole fee season as far as policing, lessons learned, and changes that you might make in the future, especially in as it pertains to uh, staffing the police? <coughs> Overall, the fees were very well. Outside of the first weekend, we had some issues. We increased our police coverage. Now, we had probably two extra game cars just swinging the exterior, which we hadn't had before. So I added those on because of that first weekend we had a few incidents with young people. Uh, we put the cars on. I want to say we had probably 15 to 20, we call them FIOs, those are field stops, where we took stop these kids and just give them a little bit of a warning that you're not allowed in this park after hours. If you catch a train with another question, you're going to take your name down, or no one in the future. And that seemed to work very well, moving those kids out of the parks. At the end of that August meeting, I think that was a pretty lively meeting, and I think that was the number one issue we discussed. I remember there was a large contingent yes. mm -hmm. in the middle, yes. some of which aren't here, who really wanted to talk mostly about kids coming to the neighborhood that were not them kids that were looking to cause a lot of trouble. We were given the locations, and like I said, at the end of the meeting, we would go back to the captain. Captain, right after that Friday and Saturday night, right up till this past weekend, put out the extra overtime cars, and I think we had a pretty quiet uh, uh, run for those four weeks. I don't think we saw as much activity. I think the police officers going to the location. I should bring the emails that I get from the community thanking us for the extra presence and read those because so we get a lot of things from people, and it was it, people were very pleased with with how it went overall. We have thousands of people coming in uh, for, for the piece. And, you know, we do have some issues, but overall, I think people are very pleased uh, with, with the fees and how they went. We also talked a little bit about the amount of aggravated assaults. Last year at this time, we had 11 aggravated assaults. Right now, we're running at four, which is a, it's a really good statistic. But it's, but it's such a tight-knit neighborhood with the amount of people that come down here. So, and again, with the extra coverage, I think we had a, really had a good run in August, and I think that had a lot to do with it. You know, deterring the kids from coming down here and causing a lot of problems. And they're good. Thanks, thanks for bringing this to our attention. Can I still tell me all those money that said surely? Did you tell no kids ever coming in the not then? They were saying, like, took the kids at a time. Nice. Get out of the mass general. And then when we No, yeah, but that was, that was before. That we're talking after, after that. Yeah. That didn't happen. And we had lengthy discussions about it at the August meeting about what right. was going on, and that's we added the extra coverage on it. And so you didn't see any of that? You didn't see any groups of kids? We was, oh, no, they, they did. That's what I was saying. They stopped the FIO kids and sent them back on their way, which means that didn't happen, Janet. Were they really young? Like they were they're saying, teenagers. Yeah. Teenagers. Well, once you let them know that they're being watched and everything, they kind of move on. Yes. And, right. Yeah. Right. They, can they can come down and go to the feast, right? right. Certainly. It's the hanging around, it's all the ice skating rink, it's all the kids, they have the gas right. everywhere. And once they realize they're being there, somebody's watching them, then they so they got their name, it's not worth it. Or it's not worth it. Will you continue to do this? Because yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think they're not here just because it was the summertime, they came yeah. out in the winter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to continue to stay on, on, on these kids. Uh, yeah, I kind of asked 
I could see firsthand from, from my window how tough that is because I saw like a group of probably 50 other boys down charter towards Hanover. And when I called in, I mean, you guys were there immediately, but the kids, by the time they got there, they broke up and they started taking off running. And I could watch them run in so many different directions and hide. So there was really, I mean, I could see the effort that was being done. It was like around, it was after midnight, you know. So I mean, it was like, how do you catch that many at once? But it was nice to see how quick that, that and I think it sprawled them out. And kind of got them a little nervous because they're kids. They, they, you know what? They, they, they're kids. And so when they you kids. see that, it, I think it helps a lot. Yeah. And again, it's, just, it's not just that they're disturbing people, it's really for the assaults, too. Yeah. There's two reasons why we're doing it. It's like the noise, but it's also, uh, we don't want them assaulting other kids, getting in fights, assaulting other kids. Uh, you get a big group of 25 kids, there's going to be something happening. It's not going to be good. So we were breaking those groups up. It mentioned something about this in a fleeting way at the last meeting, I believe, and this came up at the event that many of us just came from tonight, um, featuring Boston mayoral candidate Charlotte Villarrichi. And Ms. Romano made a great point um, when she opened up the floor before tonight's meeting. As we know, Area A1 consists of such a huge swath of downtown Boston, far more than just the North End neighborhood. And I know that none of you are legislators, of course. My question is, is there any realistic chance of Area A1 being split up or redistricted so that the north end of all neighborhoods is not grouped together with what 11 or roughly 10 or 11 other parts of the city, so that at least if that did happen, in theory, we could have more consistent police, more consistent police presence. Well, I think this is almost a talk on that for sure. So, uh, so that's something that I wanted to talk to you about because I talked about that the other night in the in Charleston. So Charlestown has a police station in Charlestown, and the drug unit is there, and who else is there? Thank you. So it's a, it's a station there, but it's not a district station. What I want to do, and I'm looking to uh, talk to uh, the mayor Paul, is to take Charlestown and North End and make that one district with one police captain mm -hmm. and the same police officers, so you'll know who your police officers are. In East Boston, we have one police captain. We have the same police officers as working. That's community policing. So I figured we could do that. Uh, and that's something that when you talk to your mayoral candidates, you should mention that to them. That you would like to see jobs on the left end, one captain, same police officers, and that will be real community policing. Charlestown likes the idea. Uh, if you have to do some paperwork at a local police station, I'm sure you could walk to Area A and do some of that paperwork, but to get one captain and police officers, I think it'd be great. So that's what we're gonna. No matter what group police officers we have, yep. they're not responding when we're calling. Well, so yes. whether it's Charlestown or Area One, yes. I think everyone is an officer, right? Yes. So whatever you put on the job, we need them to respond when we call. And Charlestown has just as many issues as other cities that we are, uh, you know, one with in Area 1. And we all know that. So Charlestown stats might come up because no one is with them, but who's to say that the severity of their calls is going to be any different from any other place that Area 1 covers? But right and now, now Area, a, a, Area a, a covers we cover Charlestown, Charlestown and, and the back captain for Charlestown. So if you have, he's the captain for Charlestown too. And the back bay. Right. So and my answer, even help. if that's the case, yeah. how is that going to make a difference of people taking yeah. into us? Because yeah. in Charlestown, while someone's getting stabbed and shot, and we're calling to prevent that yeah. from the teenagers or whoever's drinking and arguing with myself and my mother, and we're trying to prevent some more violence or anything from occurring, and I'm calling, they're telling us, well, we have a shooting and a stabbing. You're calling over a party. Well, that's, that's right. right. And, just and you're absolutely correct. correct. Just you are absolutely correct. Area 8 is huge, you know what I mean? And so that's why I figure if we get one police station, but not that in child stuff, right? You have one captain, and you have the same police officers. So you don't know who your police officers are. You don't know that because there's so many police officers here. You know what I mean? So I think it's a good idea. I think uh, it will work. So we just got to try to get it. So. Yes. Doesn't that really need more dollars and opportunities <coughs> to be effective? I mean, if you take, right. if you take 
20 officers, you know, and spread amongst 10 neighborhoods, that's two per neighborhood or whatever, by just saying, okay, we'll have 10 permanently assigned to these, you know, five neighborhoods or whatever, and 10 to the, it doesn't really solve the problem unless you're able to increase those numbers and budgets. Yeah, you're right. And they're, they're put in a new class on. And I'm not saying they just did. Yeah, we need more police officers. So I think this is, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask the mayor if we can restudy it. This is the work. Study it. I think it's a, it's a great idea. Because you it works. I mean, how, about asking, how about asking the mayor to do it? Yeah. How about no. what a study? Yeah. Why do we need a study now? We know what's they going already, on. They already, they already did the budget. You know what I mean? Just, but we know what's going on. We're Nothing, nothing. I, I hear you. But they, they already did their budget. So, I mean, this is a great discussion for the new mayor who comes in into the city. I think it's a great idea. You'll, Community police, and when you know your police officer, they'll respond. No, they'll respond. Because there'll be one captain. And you'll know the captain. Captain Lee did a great job, but he has a big district. Route, so I'm hoping it will help. So, so, yes. You know, we get to know our police officers if they get out of the cars, if they're on bikes or on foot. Three. When they're in the patrol cars, we don't need to know them. They, they're driving. So, so I have. I have my name is Dalene Romano. Hi, Dalene. So I know you. Cause this whole big thing. Um, my, I'm upset over the fact that they're having their parties fine, but for me to call for three hours straight and not one call, and I understand that Boston is big, and you need people where they need to go but not one police officer for three hours to come and just say, because one cop would shut them right down. Instead, it has to escalate into a fight in order for them to come. And then they have the attitude, there's no fight here. Why'd you call us? At four, quarter past four in the morning, okay, for three hours, they're just moving out. What's your problem? That's the answer I got. Right. What is your problem? They're just moving out. Well, first of all, it's 4.15, okay? They shouldn't be moving out at that time, whether they left bags and whatnot behind, all right? And second of all, for three hours, listen, we're getting assaulted, we're getting robbed, we're getting sexually assaulted in the night in the North End, which never happened before. Do you know why? Because the North End residents always took care of it. Now you come before us and you say, you can't do that anymore. You have to let us do it. But you're not. You're not answering us. You're leaving us frustrated. You're not answering us. You called 911. Three right. times. We right. made your calls. Justine called me, right? Yeah, we spoke about this. We talked on the phone, and I spoke to you, and I told you the number to talk to the duty supervisor so your mother would never have it again, right? <coughs> right, but uh, to be honest with you, I know we spoke about it, but this is just a, an issue that occurs. And like I was saying to you when we spoke on the phone, when you try and tell us, call us, we're going to take care of it, you can put your trust in us, and we try to do that, and then we find out that we can't. Because we had a conversation that happened with my issue on Hanover Street when I found the tracking device on the ATM, okay? And that could have been any sort of device. At first, I originally thought, oh, a car reader. Then I called my mother, I called one of my friends to come to see and they went before a police officer to come. Then our mind started water, wandering. The 45 minutes to an hour it took for them to come. That other things in the city could have just been these reading devices. They ended up not being able to get okay? So, it gets you it gets you pumped up, right? Now you're frustrated, now you're anxious, now that officer comes and, and they're not there to help you. So it, it gets a lot of frustration, especially when for me to know that my mother was scared to call me because of the threats that those kids were making towards her, to to do things to her if she didn't go upstairs, that she was nervous of, for my safety if I was gonna come. So it just leaves you unsettled and it makes you think, okay, well if we can't get the assistance from them. We're going to find some of their assistance from. And it, it leaves you with that, that culture that we're trying to not have anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, think I, can, I have the same thing because I called for the, for the party that was on Henchman. And I, call, I started that call at 2 o'clock. And the last time I was here, I was told that it was so busy. You, you know, the busiest time is between 11 and 2 and don't call. You know, it's after busy time. So I, I waited. I waited until after 2 to call. And then I kept calling and calling. And finally, about 4 o'clock, 
I'm now so mad. There's people yelling outside saying that they're going to beat the shit out of these kids. And now it's, it's going to escalate, just like you're saying. So the, the operator on the phone literally tells me, she says, hey, she says, you know what? There are family members getting shot, and we have to prioritize. And I said, there's family members getting shot for the last two hours in Boston? Holy crap, I can't wait for the news in the morning. You know, I mean, and it's like, you know, it's like it's those like, kids, that those many people, they people not have to that's go where the altercations come. So they can put the fake gun on, on Tom Enzo Street. Well, what if it's a real one? What if yeah. these kids inside that building had a, a, a tried to do something to my mother? Then because it's more violence, we'll get a response. It's kind of like we're calling to prevent that. But if we clock that down, shut down. It so almost fast. makes you feel like you get yeah, you know, you know, you know, you know, somebody to fight, yeah. they'll come. But the operator told me that the police did come by around two something and they shut it down and they left. Means nobody got out of the I don't know, nobody yeah, got out of the car, nothing happened. And and it's like, you know, if you gotta get up at six by four fifteen, you're so pissed off. If it can be shut down at four fifteen, if they're right. gonna come by at two, right. they can shut it down at two. Now frustration with these kids, 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 kids get out of the car. Come on, it's a big shut for something to occur. And officer, if I have to tell you, there's gonna be an effect. I've had the same experience. We live above her. And by the way, my husband said, in the future, come get him. He, because these kids are drunk. Well, I think they're, they're out of that apartment, finish. right? They're, yeah. they're, they're out of that apartment. He has dismissive attitude on it's not a dismissive attitude. It's, attitude. Attitude. it's speaking the truth. They're but out the of that But the truth is, is that there the will kids. be, at some point, an incident. These kids are high. They're drunk. And they have threatened me, they have threatened her. This is not acceptable. I mean, last year, this, those kids moved out too, but the same thing happened. There's another group of kids in the downstairs apartment. Wasn't it the downstairs apartment? And they tried to fight her. She, she, that time she called us because they were literally trying to fight her. But it, it's just like, what can we do? What can we put? There's no put we, we can sit here all day and talk about it. Right. But what can we do rather than just giving us a number? What can be put in place to stop this and ensure the that when we call, them. somebody is going to respond? Please. Body calls are not going to receive an emergency response. They're not going to receive an emergency response by any police department in the country. You're not going to get three-minute response times like we do for our preparatory one crimes for a party. We're not looking for three minutes. And I can't stand here to say that's happening. Yeah. 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 We know it's not happening. Yeah. It's going to be frustrating for calls yeah. about party calls. It can be. I wish we had twice as many officers. But we can't have one. one. It's not just one. the love party, Officer Boyle. It's the threat. I'm Captain Lee. That's all. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry. It, but I, I, I just want to be sure that you're understanding oh, the, the depth of what we're talking about. Because I feel like you're speaking into this this understanding that the police officers have of, oh, no, it's not urgent. Well, these kids are drunk. They're high. You can't reason with them. And at some point, they're physically threatening us. And it's like, oh, kids potty. It's like, no, you don't understand. If, if the person's physically threatened, here. call immediately and say I'm being threatened by the person. That's what she did. I'm the girl doesn't Wait, they came down. The police gave me a hard time because yes. the girl said, oh, we never said nothing. We're just trying to move out. And the cop says to me, why don't you give them a break? They're just trying to move out. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and that's happened to me, by the way, too. Where I have been Was that Miss Massachusetts, or was that the other Yeah, Miss Massachusetts, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's that, that same Massachusetts is like situation. that I have been than my mother. But <laughs> the same situation happened to me. So I actually I know. have two things to say. Enough one, enough. the next time we call the police, I'm going to videotape it so you can I'll understand how distressing it is that a lot of my existence And again, threats are different than just allowed. Yeah, I totally get that. I mean, I totally understand the response time. I get that 100%. What was frustrating is that I had to wait for 4.15 for the operator to tell me that somebody did come two hours ago and they stopped it, and it didn't stop. So what happens is, is when they come at 4.15, it's miraculously stopped. So at 2 o'clock, what's the difference? That's Because I do get the response time. The other piece on that just is the, uh, the follow-up. And you know, follow-up's not always 
work out to everyone's advantage, but on that the henchman charter street call, the owner of the building, you know, inform me that if anyone has any future complaints and maybe some people have called and maybe some people haven't, that he would openly give his telephone number now with him. Let me finish. He had an email address for everybody in the building and the, the people who were involved in that particular unit came forward, explained exactly what happened and basically said that, you know, if an incident like that happens again, we're out of the building, but we'll assure you that it will not happen again in that particular apartment. So again, okay. working with the building owner, working with the people in the units, trying to identify, because I think part of that call would have made been some people on the roof. Yes. I think it came up last month uh, for that particular address. Again, the owner came, he came forward to me right away. He says, I'm going to get every email address. I'm going to give you every telephone number. If you get another problem, another problem came in. And he said, you know, for any future activity, any resident who wants to help, he goes, I'll come down on a Friday night, Saturday night, 4 o'clock in the morning, I'll, then I'll identify them, and I'll have leases made up where I'll remove them from the building. So, again, I think the positive piece of that is that it did get brought up last month. We did get a hold of the owner of the building, and the owner of that particular building is going to be responsive. And hopefully, with the amount of different addresses we do have in the north end, that it will improve at that particular location. It's not perfect. Yes. Uh, my name is John Bureau and I'm an aggravation officer. I've been working in criminal justice for 57 years. And I just want to share a couple of things here. I organized the first uh, community school on Tonawana Street back in 72. We had the same problem there where some of the young people were terrorized in the neighborhood and so forth. And we had to have a lot of community involvement. But the main thing that I was involved with was in Manchester, New Hampshire, for instance. We started uh, a Juvenile police officer program. I mean, I worked as a probation officer. We did nightlight work, so it's a combination of police officers and the police and the probation officers going together. So if uh, somebody's on probation moves into our neighborhood, the police officers should know who they are. Yeah. They have a probation officer, and they'll make home visits. And we'll also check them to see if they have, they're supposed to be drinking. Now, Ralph Morose is one of the officers that work with me over here. He does on Mooch Street. And we did that in these spots and working out very well. And the police officer can walk into the home with the probation officer. And we can do that here. I don't know if we can do it. It costs a bit more money up front to do it, but it saves a lot of frustration in lives. And also getting parents involved. If there's a person juvenile somewhere, find out who they are. I know it costs more money. We need more police officers. I understand that a lot of police officers are leaving the force, but we're not hiring them. That's true in East Boston. And I don't know if it's true here or not. Uh, yeah. Is that true that we, do, we need more police officers? Yeah, we need more. I understand we do that. Yeah, and, sure. uh, so that's something, it's, sure. good, it's good investment into our quality of life here. So I feel that we should have this juvenile uh, officer program so that they can be proactive and find out where they are and make visits ahead of time. This is something that I've done personally as a probation officer. And uh, I think that this is something that we should be more involved in doing for all our neighbors and not let it happen. Be in front of your just, face. Just one of the things, one thing though. If you let us know, we track all party calls. We do go to follow ups on all of these parties. If we have to go back, we do go back. Kenny does a visit. We have some of our offices for human service go back and talk to the people that have those parties. So we do appreciate you coming to our attention and we do follow up on these. It, with, the, with the tenant, and with the landlord. Yes, uh, oh, excuse me, aren't we supposed to have at least one police officer assigned to this neighborhood? You have more, you have more than one police okay, officer. Okay, so assigned. why are you saying that, all right, I understand it's not a shooting, it's not a stabbing, it's a party. But it's affecting us. I mean, we're here month after we month have after extra, month. But also, why don't we have just one, one guy that will answer? That's all we need. We had a car out just for the parties. Just for the parties. We had 15 calls during that same time period. And unfortunately, that's the time period, as we know, when they were all, when they were all coming in. So it's, that's just, just to handle those type of calls. So we put it on for, because it's moving the weekend. So that was a separate car that we, outside of our regular patrols even, outside of our overtime patrols, we had another car on just for bodies. And we still had the volume that we had. Because we know a lot of people are moving out, moving in. Was it just put in the north end? Yes, for just the north in the end. north end. Yes, so it took end. them that long just to, to come back around. Well, the same offices who wound up coming when you when you had a, when it was going to be a fight. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And when you call back, and there's going to be a fight, and those officers came back down there, there were four officers, two of them were that party, we, we, we call it internally a, a party guy. Um, that's, what, that's what that was. You know, it wasn't so much of the party, but it was the way the officers acted. It was just yeah, like, it's not it's not they dismiss us. They just, yeah, it's just like, they think they're like you again. And it, and, and yeah, we're bothering them. Exactly. They, they, yeah. had, they had such an attitude, like, just like, exactly. They like, dismiss it. Yeah, go in your apartment. That's like, what they, go, yeah, go in your apartment right now. Well, let me just explain. I've been trying to call. No, we don't want to hear it. Just go upstairs. Exactly. They're just trying to move some stuff out and you bother they us. Believe that's that. exactly. That, that that's what that's bothered true. me more that's than the people having the party. I know. Just seem to me about that. And I'm going to speak to those about I've had that situation. Yes, no, what I want to know is if this same unit is been over and over. So even when you do come, whatever you do, is it working? So what is the process when you come in? You say, bad boy, bad girl, and yeah. just let it happen again? What is the other thing? thing? We've talked know, about the other time about putting sanctions on the landlord. Somebody's renting this landlord. all the time to the landlord. Someone's renting to school. Well, young people, I don't know if they're school. But they act the same way any time they come, though. Yeah. 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 Are we getting some bad tenants? <laughs> Someone's getting some bad tenants. But my question is, you know, the other time, we've been coming up many, many times and talked about possibly trying to see if we can put legislation past to try to sanction these landlords and what's going on for them. Are they getting fined when we're calling? Or is it going? Are they getting fined? Because then the landlord would then go, and my guess is they would be harsher on their tenants. If, I mean, if it comes out of their pocket, they're going to get mad about it. That's right. Another thing is, why do they allow people to move in 10, 11, 12 on the I don't know. Why? Because I make sure that they don't. So there's the issue of stock of that. That's not the way it was. And it's just sitting in the city. Right? What is the process? What is the process? So when you make a call, what is the process after that? Do they just say, oh, don't do this? Because whatever you're doing, it's not working. <laughs> on, on a party call, usually you would tell the person on the first time you're there to turn the music down. And what happens consecutive times, like what happened with this? Are you arresting them for disorderly conduct? But like, what is the incentive? It could be depending, depending on the circumstances. If someone refused, late at night, refused to turn music down, could you be arrested? Yeah, you could be arrested for disorderly conduct. But if you're refusing to do it. Most misdemeanors, you have to be given only warning. Yes, yes, ma'am. I just, you know what, I was thinking about that. It's a little, it's a little tough so to come back or to come by the first time at like 2 in the morning or 2.30 and tell them to, to turn it down, to give them a chance. It's like, it's almost like maybe just wait, like, five minutes because I know it one does. of us are going to call back again and say, they've turned it back up, they're yelling out on the street, they're throwing bottles in their back the second you guys drive off. So now we got to wait almost two hours to get they you back in again. Up. So that's kind of a little tight. I mean, I can understand what you're saying. I'm just a little unsure how that, you know. You know I used to work with us policemen the same time in Brighton when I was a patrol officer. And I went to a million body calls and saw it all and it arrested a lot of people. But believe it or not, most people, when you ask them to turn their music down, they turn their music down. Not here. They really do. Not here. Not here. But, but I'm telling you, most people will turn their music down and they'll be doing it. Well, we're telling you, Kevin, they don't. They don't. Oh, I know, this, this particular group is. Overall, I don't say those 15 calls, we have what is this one we have turned the music down for you anyway. That's it. I'm not turning the music down for Well, I think they might be saying they turn it back up, maybe. Yeah. Well, they turn it back up. Yeah. 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 And it's not the music for me. Yeah. It's, it's the music. Yeah. It's the music. 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 It's and if a police officer doesn't respond, how does how is that established as a complaint where that adds to the number of violations that increases the fine that then um, you know starts to feel the pain and maybe talk to his tenants? Because if you don't respond, no report is filed, therefore, you know, there's no you know establishment of number of you know, violations. How do you track those things? Well, I mean, if the police didn't respond, I mean, you know, part of the internal procedures that Captain said is we have to figure out, we, we go through, we make a 911 call, we'll stick with five minutes. Um, 
There's, there's no response on that. We have we get up. We have to get a hold of the 911 operator. We have to find out what the particular remarks were, or what the response was from the dis from the 911 uh, operator. If we got the dispatch, sometimes it might get stalled at that stage. When it gets to the uh, you know the piece of legislation that that Cell helped put together, it's it's where you know we file release reports. The the owner of the the, the building has been non-responsive. Um, we'll you know, we'll find, arrested, or uh, brought them to court, or we'll file the uh, keeper of a disorderly house complaint, and we find that the, the owner of the property has been non-responsive. And then you would build a case for that. I mean, I've gone to court before Beacon Hill, 74 Joy Street. I think we had almost 51 calls at that particular location. It was a, a large building before the legislation went in. We brought them to court, the kids were suspended, ended up leaving the school, they had to pay for attorneys, their parents came in, it became a whole big to-do, and, and that's where we kind of got the ball rolling. That's actually how Rich Grealish, Suffolk University, Emerson College got involved in the creation of the weekend loud party car that, you know, other districts don't have. I mean, we have a, a you know, we, Rich Grealish does go out on the weekends, and we do track stuff, but even on 90 Salem Street, I mean, I've gone back the entire year, and maybe calls have gone in, but I don't see any other, you know, calls that have gone in to 90 Salem Street for the entire year. That particular incident did happen, and obviously if we were getting called down to 90 Salem Street, you know, you know, all the time, I'd be the one to bring them in for being a keeper of a disorderly house and then going back, as you know, you gave me the information on, you know, I, what I would have had in the database on the owners, and then I would have brought them to court for being... The, uh, the owner of the condo and not really doing anything with it. But okay, let me just let me just finish. So I think part of this whole thing, even going back to the Henchman Street, back to the Charter Street thing, is to find out who the owners are. In this given case, we already talked about this is going to be a responsive landlord owner. I own these properties. Call me. Give my information out. If the guy never returns our calls, he's not doing anything. There's new tenants that were constantly getting beat up and destroyed. Constantly going to party calls. That's when the legislation kicks in. Boom, we're going to whack them with 300 bucks. We're either going to lock the kids up or we're going to summon them in. And, and that's how it gets going. You've got to remember now, you know, realistically, there's an awful lot of college kids that have moved into this neighborhood. The young professionals are over the top for the amount of people that have moved into this neighborhood from as far as New York City. And these young individuals, on their weekends, in their minds, I'm having my friends over, we're going to put on whatever, and we're going to have a party. And in their worlds, they think there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because this is like, I don't want to call it a New York lifestyle, or it's a back day, South End lifestyle, but they kind of look at it like, this is what we do. And then it takes us to show up, responses from the neighborhood, and then a couple of fines, and then maybe an arrest, and then maybe getting a hold of the landlords. It's a process because the vast majority of these calls that me and Teddy take, we keep the database of young professionals, and when we show up, we'll show up tag team together. They're like, what do you mean? What, what do we do? What's so bad? And the what young we professionals, they never have parties because they call me and they say, we get some people over. Yeah. Yeah. They have of people course. over. Right. Let's not make this a and bashing young professional uh, uh, time because okay. from a young professional who went to Suffolk University, I did have parties, but it wasn't parties, it was people coming over. And the difference is, it's not that it's a New York lifestyle, it's a no respect lifestyle. Well, I, I, I have to question. It's not really a police response for the law, but there is a, a record that you made the initial line of one call. Yeah, you don't need to keep all that. Right, it doesn't set that in effect. The, the other thing I'd like to yeah. say is that we're kind of getting two messages here. Now, in the first, in the first place, right, you get no. We have a history of getting no response when you call for a party, so you don't call. But now you're saying, because you're saying, oh, there's other things that are busy, so she goes down and she tells them, please be quiet, whatever the cards are. She goes down a second, she goes down a third, she just frustrated, whatever, goes to sleep, tries to close the windows, whatever happens. Now this happens multiple times. Now you're saying, but call every time, because if you call every time, it'll be locked, but then if we call every time, we're just calling for potty calls, so... We're not telling you not to call. We're not telling you not to call. We're telling you to call. I'm not saying we're going to get an immediate response, but we're telling you to call. Yeah, but it's important to call. My point is there was no track record for Salem Street, except I think over a year ago I went down and talked to those three, and that was more of a dispute 
I forget exactly how it went down, but I remember going into that time, and I remember doing a follow-up with you, and it's been, I think it's been maybe over a year. No, what I'm trying to say is, no, and I have called several times okay. myself, so I don't know. The 90 Salem Street? 90 well, Salem Street. I'll triple check it, but I, I, I don't have it here on record. It wasn't one of our top addresses. I understand that, and I, I appreciate your efforts, and I'm really not trying to be difficult, but I'm entitled to a safe environment. I'm entitled. I work 60 hour work weeks. I don't need to be up all night. And this is what's happening, and I'm very upset with the police department. But have you spoken to the landlord about who they're Oh, please. The landlord? The landlord says one thing to the tenants and another to, to us. And then the landlord attacks us. I mean, this event that happened this past weekend, she was absolutely, I mean, it was just unbelievable. And my husband got up because he heard her and he said, you know what? I'm afraid that one of them is going to hurt her and I'm afraid that they're going to make false allegations against her, which is what some of those creeps did to me and the police threatened to arrest police me. Police turned so on her. trust me, yeah. I have, I have they do. done. I am done and I am Quite frankly, there's a very good reason to feel that way. So what I'm here to say is, I will not tolerate disrespect going forward, and I will call every single time. But this is, I, 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 and I'm a little upset right now, because when she's saying that they threatened her, they did that to me New Year's Eve, and then the police were aggressive and rude with me. So going forward, I have a little video camera. And I will be videotaping the police because I don't deserve that. I'm a law-abiding citizen. I expect to be respected. I'm going to respect you, but respect me because trust me, I've got better things to do with my time than call you to a proper Janet? Janet, you have your hand up? Yes, I was going to say uh, two things I have to say. I think that the dispatch office doesn't maybe explain to the call, uh, on the call, what's going on. I think they just say, like, the address. Because, you know, when I call they, back... They put it in the computer. They actually don't talk to the, well, the offices. The they person don't that type anything in. Well, the they, how about it is, if that person is speaking to you on the phone, types it in, then it goes to another person who's actually on the radio. It's by the yeah. time you get it, it's like a little noise on Fulton Street. It's <laughs> not like... They're going to kill each other, the walls are shaking. I mean, you know, by the time, and I can understand the guy comes in the car, doesn't get out of the car, doesn't even hear the noise because the windows are shut. But that's one thing. Another thing, could you start putting these calls that you have, like on that chart, uh, like how many calls you get every month, yeah. or how, and what happens to those things? Because if that's such a big uh, problem to us. We would yes. like to know, like you said, one night, one weekend, there was 15 calls, so they couldn't. Oh, you mean like the actual call, calls, the call yes. line? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it means something to us. Yeah, that I mean, you know it, about. It, 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 you know meeting, about how many yeah. calls there are. Every single meeting I go to, I always go over the calls. I give everybody a list. I tell everyone. I tell everyone if we've had uh, secondary calls to those addresses. Mm -hmm. You tell that to us? Absolutely. We've Absolutely. heard this. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> tell the truth. Does anybody hear them say, I'm so close? I'm going every meeting. Every meeting. Every meeting. It's not on the sheet. I, it's not on the sheet. I must have been the one time. I should 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 have been the one time. <laughs> I never heard you once say we got calls for parties 25 times last weekend. I never heard you say it. I, I don't think I've ever said that. Well, I know you said it. Said it. Said it. I, I always say in the, I always say this every meeting if anybody can join in because I I know I'm not whatever. I'll always say in the last 30 days we had 15 loud party calls, and I'll say if we had any secondary addresses, and I'll and I'll say the addresses. Now over the summer, obviously we're not going to in the summertime we're not going to get the same type of amount of loud party calls. Over the moving day weekend, from I believe it was um, um, August 29th through the weekend, we had a total of five calls. 
I think part of the issue on that with the dispatch and really looking at it, there were a lot of other things that were going on. I know there was an arrest on Commercial Street, so I know units were tied up on that particular call. That probably slowed the response. But overall, there were a total of five, and the, there were units out there for that. And as I mentioned at the beginning, since the last meeting, the biggest issue that was brought up and some of the people weren't here were the amount of kids that were coming down into the neighborhood yeah, in a positive that's not way. An issue. We have a couple of them. Okay. But at that particular meeting, that was the big issue. Right. And I think in a positive way, because of having those additional units, nobody is here to say, my kid got grabbed, my kid got beat up, somebody hit my kid with a bat. It did not happen in the last four weeks. The peace went very, very well. The amount of uh, loud party calls in the last five weeks have been, really been very minimal. Unfortunately, what happened in, uh, at, at Charter and Henchman and the delayed response at that particular call, the positive side of it is, those tenants are up. They're never coming back. We have a, a pretty good, it seems like a pretty good owner at the other end, and he's going to be really accountable for that particular address. And where do we go from here? Like we do at every meeting, we move forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think what, what, you know, we're hearing what you're saying about positive response, I think that's why we're all sitting here, because they're asking for some more assistance. So we know that you're effective in some ways, and we're trying to find a better way to be more effective with these parties, especially now that it's September going into the school year. And I, and I want to say, you know, I mean, I, I thank you for, for all the work. From, just from my end, from my own personal thing, it's like I, I try really hard if there's a party. You know, we try to go over and just tell them to be quiet. And a lot of times, you know, sometimes that can work. And, it, and just from my end, it's not so much, uh, you know, somebody having a party that's young, you know, that what, that's, that's younger than professional people or whatever, and they're surprised they don't have a party. These are, when I call, it's because it's so loud, because it's escalated, because they're out on the street, because they're yelling their heads off, because they're throwing things off the roof. That's when I make a call, you know, to the police. And I lived in New York for, for eight years, so it's not like it's, you know, they're having a New York moment. Because I've lived in New York, I've lived around a whole hell of a lot more crap than this. So, if I could strike one thing, it would have been the New York response. I didn't really mean it in that fashion. But. Yeah. There was one, uh, one of our residents couldn't be here tonight, but she's a good friend of ours, and she asked me to give a message to all our young people, because a lot of people watch us uh, on the computer. And her message was to the students, stop it walking around naked, and we can see you all around. And I promised her, she made me promise, you, I would say that. And I said that to her, because she's watching her mom, she wouldn't be here. Oh, I'll fuck it up. It's easy, it's a good question. That's it. And I bet so I have one. So we'll go right back. Why don't I just take it off? All right, we're going to wrap up. Thank you all for coming.